Hey guys, today I am gonna talk about Alpha Investments video, Stores Will Go Bankrupt in 2023. Uh, not the best title for a video <laughs> if you own a game store. Uh, I think something has to be said about this. Most people who own a game store, like me, my friend, and some other people we know, we're in a Facebook group community together uh, where we decide what to buy, we sell. I mean, if we have extra inventory or we have uh, somebody needs an extra amount of something. I don't really log into it. I don't think I've logged in for like the last six months now that I think about it. But these people own other businesses. In my opinion, just like how Rudy Chan owns a restaurant business, right? Or restaurant, whatever, it's a restaurant supply business to the government. I own a marketing agency. My friend owns a construction company. And I'm trying to think of some other stores. Uh, well, the store at like Eden, they do, they still have jobs as teachers or math teachers and so on. So they still have like full-time jobs. And then the game store is just kind of a, a bonus. It's a, a business that you run on the side because you're very passionate about the hobby. Once money dries up, a lot of these people won't have, you know, let's say my marketing agency isn't doing as good as it used to do. And now I have less money and I have less flexibility. Yeah, then the game store, I'm gonna close, but it doesn't mean the end of me, right? I still, the game store never made me money. It was just something fun for me to do. So I think that has to be said, like and a lot of people won't say this. I don't know why they don't say this, right? So if the game, if Alpha Investments quote, magic store went belly up or his wife store, you know, his whole warehouse, whatever it's called, his Patreon system, he would still be okay because I would imagine that the restaurant for government contracts, given how lucrative these government contracts are nowadays, that that probably makes 10 times as much as he makes from doing magic. He does magic because there's an addiction. People ask, why do I make YouTube videos when I'm a lawyer? Shouldn't I make more money? It's an addiction. It's fun to do. It's a hobby. I've never considered this a job. Sometimes I joke about it, but it's a joke. Like I cannot make near, I mean, I own a marketing agency, like uh, to give that up, to risk that for, for what? For a YouTube channel that gets like a hundred views? No, but it's fun to do. And there's kind of a celebrityism. There's kind of a addiction. I mean, if you go on magic right now, you type magic gathering, you're short by time viewed. There are people making tons of videos much better than me and they get like five views. And you can go on their history and they're making videos every day. You make videos in the same way, the reason that you man stores. In fact, you know what? This is actually a very good parallel that I didn't think of until just now. It doesn't matter how many people watch my views, right? Or might watch my videos. It doesn't matter how many subscribers I have. I mean, obviously the bigger the number, the better, right? Because the more reach that you have, it's just, addicting to do it's a hobby it's like opening packs you're just addicted to making youtube videos uh in the same way that you're addicted to opening your magic store it's the same principles it's the same principles at play you enjoy kind of almost the abuse and you enjoy getting a good deal from your distributor yeah sometimes i get a really good deal on product that i otherwise don't even that or isn't even like selling for msrp people are trying to scalp the product now i'm getting it for lower than distribution prices so when people open a store, and the reason that stores may close isn't because that's the primary source of income for that individual or individuals. Like Etten has like four individuals. I think one of them is a math teacher. Uh, so they all have like jobs, right? Maybe one of their jobs is like to run the store when they're not running. I don't know how, again, um, when Asgard Games was owned by my friend, um, whose name I forgot because it was so long ago, he sold it off. Uh, the reason that it was such an interesting place was the rent. The rent, his um, uncle or some some relative of his gave him the rent for like $200 a month where it is in a very nice location in town. And it's huge. So the reason that he had a game store was because his he had connections and he had low rent, which is the same with me for clients. My clients let me stay at their place. They let me open their game store for no money. I just had to pay the water, the bill. I just had to pay the bills, but there was no rent. Right, because it's it otherwise it would just be empty. So from my client standpoint, it's better for it to be look full. That way they can rent out the other places in the strip mall that are empty than for it just to be empty and it looks like a, a, a desert, right? 
So there were certain times, like on the weekends, that I had to be open because that's when they would be showing off the strip mall to potential renters. I just think that overall, like it, it's one of these things that like people always ask, okay, if you're a lawyer, why make a video? If you're a, a, a billionaire, why make a video? Like, you know, you know, Bill, Bill Gates has got a YouTube channel. All the things about YouTube channel, right? You're like, oh, why aren't there time? Elon's on YouTube, he was on the Nelk podcast a few uh, months ago. So the, the question is like, if you are like this and you are Elon Musk, then why make so many videos or Sam Bateman free? Why do you do so many interviews? It's because it's like really addicting. It's the same addiction that you have to gambling. You have to like opening a store or running a store. But you have to cut your losses at some point. So these stores are going to bankrupt, not because that they're, people are going to lose their livelihoods, minus the employees, of course, um, but because not the, the store owner is not going to zero, but because that there is just too much pressure on the, you know, it would jeopardize the actual businesses that we own that make money. And that's why I'm closing down my physical store to go digital only. I've tested the uh, live streaming method and it, it worked for the most part. People enjoyed it. Um, I just need to find the right person to do it. And again, we've been looking for over six months now. And it has not happened. I mean, we, we came very close to hiring. We, we actually had one person and she was just God awful. Um, my God. I paid her money just to not never talk to me again. I was like, okay, this is the money. Take it and then just, you know, never contact me again. That's how bad it was. Anyway. Um, yeah, stores will go bankrupt in 2023, but not for the reasons you think it will go. Mainly because, you know, we have to work on our regular businesses and to do so, we won't have the time to really commit to make it successful. So instead of just oozing money out, it's time to pause it. And then once we, our regular business is, you know, fine and doing well again, then we can go ahead and, and uh, open our card shops again. Hi guys.